minutes of Mo. Now recording. Yes, yes. Valuable minutes starring me, Mo Davey. Value <laughs> the Mo yeah. Minute. <laughs> yes, the Mo Minute. Dude, I I'm supposed to <laughs> I told myself when I got my own place I was gonna do my own little independent show called the Mo Show. It's where I uh, just fucking read off like news bits that I wanna talk about for like a few minutes. Like, you know, try not to make it into like a, a schizo fucking fed posting fucking like little <laughs> thing. So like I'm I'm having I'm I'm having to do my my DD my due diligence and, and not uh fuck anything up so yeah 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 you should call that so, show the Mo Minute. Uh well actually you know that's that's not the worst idea I've ever heard it, it's not the most how long you last want to be but hey 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 excuse me I think I last more than a minute at least like five. Or ten. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> Riley, have you even had sex yet? <laughs> That's irrelevant to the Shut up. Shut up. You <laughs> shut your fucking trap. <laughs> now I want you to not shut up, and I want you to tell me what you were going to tell Robin and I earlier before we started the show. <laughs> okay, so I forgot about Bitch. the podcast for a couple minutes because I was of I got course. caught up in working working on a project. So um uh, if you if project you, now, is it <laughs> shut the fuck up? So, <laughs> a, so if if you happen to be a listener of my show, Largest Issue in the Galaxy, then you may know some of this, fair listeners. Uh, but uh, we we had a guest named Demi Gloom on episode thirty nine of our show, one of our one of our better episodes, and. Uh, in that episode, we found out that Andrew had a fucking SoundCloud where he posted raps, and we asked him to give it to us, and he wouldn't. But then, oh, shit. Demi found Andrew's SoundCloud, so that happened, and we, we, we got introduced to the greatness that was No Pressure, which is a rap that Andrew made that we will bully him forever for. <laughs> oh but, my um, god. <laughs> And, uh, you know, maybe we should all like to get together and just make like a fucking rap song. You know, like how uh, B and Vizzy fucking do it. And, and now apparently your friend Andrew here, like, you know, I think maybe we should all just get together and make a a fucking terrible rap song. And like, I pretend, actually, like, it's fucking hot shit. I actually started like before this whole thing. I actually started writing like a purposely shitty rap song. Like right after I heard that Andrew had a SoundCloud, I was like. I could do this. I'm gonna write a perfect. I'm gonna write a purposely shitty rap song that's like a cliche of rap songs, and I might finish that at some point. But uh, there's this that uh, so Demi, after finding Andrew's Cloud and Cloud, and after that whole debacle, uh, Demi made a diss track about Andrew, and Andrew was was supposed to make a diss track about Demi afterwards, but he has yet to deliver on said diss track and. He's getting teased about it by Demi and me constantly. And now I've decided I think I might throw my hat into the ring and write, write, write a diss track about Andrew myself. So that's what I was working on before this show started, is my, my diss track about Andrew. So, like, what you're, what you're saying is you're working on your rap career. So you can just I am. give me and Robin the fucking finger. And tell us to go fuck ourselves. I don't need your shitty little podcast. I have my big rap career. Listen, hey, I'm from three and a half mile, not quite eight mile, but three and a half. You know, I've, I already have a rapper there. name lined up. It's okay. I came up with it in middle school, and I'm running oh, with what, it. What, what's your What's your rapper name? <laughs> fucking straight chain. <laughs> fucking straight chain. No, wow. not, the, the fucking is not part of it. The The rap name is straight chain. No kidding. Straight chain. Hmm. You know, that just brings to mind every single, like, suburban white dude try to act fucking hard and black and <laughs> shit during, like, the the mid to late 90s when, like, that was in fashion and in style. Like, you sound like you sound like a fucking nice kid. It's like, motherfucker, bitch, mom, don't call me by my given name, Riley. Fucking call me by my street name. Straight chain. Straight chain. So Remember the name. You just gotta get grills. That's, It'll a be line, perfect. that's a line for the diss track, by the way. If you don't know, that was a preview. That's one single line from that diss track. 
oh man, fucking be like Paul Wall and just fucking get a goddamn big ass uh, diamond necklace that has like a ton of diamonds there you and go. shit fucking like in the little basket. Like it's total like a, you know, like a waste of money and fucking total, you know, yeah, greed, but blah, blah. But God, it was, it was some shit to fucking behold. I and mean, you can all you can also put out like one fucking good rap song and like you know glob off your buddy Andrew's fucking fame like uh he did with fucking Mike Jones back in the mid two thousands. You know he got busted for fucking selling weed one time. Who? <clears throat> uh, fucking Paul Wall. Who's Paul Wall? Shut the fuck, up. Riley. <laughs> God. You know what? You know what? I had it with your bullshit, Riley. Let's just start the show. Okay? Okay, sure. Uh, a one, a two, a skiddly diddly. <laughs> Fuck you, Riley. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to the MoCast, the only podcast whose fucking lead guy has finally moved out of his fucking mom and dad's place after about two and a half years, you know, of losing everything. And, uh, you know, just like, and I'm not saying like I lost a couple of things like my couch and my good chair. Not like, not like I lost like most of my fucking physical possessions and shit just because uh, I I needed to leave because I lost my job, my car, and everything. And so we are now recording out of the impenetrable fortress that is the RV that I'm living in, in a nice little RV spot, you know. Uh, oh, my God, outside. you're living in an RV? I didn't even realize. <laughs> oh, it's it's a good RV, though. It's like, it's, it's nice. It's not white trashy or anything. There aren't any beer bottles or fucking used needles around here. In fact, but I yeah. live... Uh, uh, can you, you know, hopefully never but uh i i open up the door right and i see the fucking bay and i see the little creek right next to it it's like it's a, or like maybe it's big enough to be a river but uh it's it's really fucking nice i have a swanky little setup i even have a fucking uh porch which i've never had a porch before i've had like a little patio that looks like if my fat ass dangled out there and fucking fall and i don't know what it is about apartment people when they look at fat people and they think to themselves, hey, let's set this fat guy up four or five stories. You know, what could possibly hap- happen, you know? You figured in a perfect world, you'd have all your fatties, you know, down at the first or second floors, you know, just in case. Hey, Riley, I'm sorry. You were about to say something. Yeah, I was saying I think you and the, the fine folks over at Yig Studio need to have an RV battle. <laughs> dude my rv could pro- well i don't know did you kind of i mean b has like a bunch of money now probably more than i do so he might win that rv battle like i'm afraid to like get into a battle it turns out like a one-sided battle like in battle bots now that that's a <laughs> that's an old fucking show for like the uh, you know, how that's are you show that's actually what oh. yes mr interrupt <laughs> hold on captain interrupt can it captain just... interrupt tour interruptor it's just yes. the fact that i never heard the of the the fucking franchise of battle bots in my life this happened to me, this happens to me all the time where i won't hear about something like forever and then the first time i hear about it i start hearing about it constantly some fucking old guy at work was talking about fucking battle bots and now you bring it up and now it's everywhere well it's a show that's actually stood the test of time uh I never thought that, you know, we, we kind of thought that BattleBots is going to be a fad that was just going to show up and get out. But apparently it's come back like three or four fucking times. Uh, does really fucking successful, rides the fad, it fucking dies out, they cancel the show, and it just comes back a few years later. It's kind of neat because, like, uh, BattleBots, they, they, you'll have, like, these two badass fucking robots fighting, right? But then, like, someone will not have the fucking rotator splint, you know, like, hooked up correctly to the splunk link, and it'll fucking hit it once and fucking explode all over the goddamn place. Like, you can tell the people who do their work versus the people who just, like, really half-assed it. And, yeah, that, 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 uh... I forgot the point I was making. I just want to talk about BattleBots. I didn't think I was that stoned, but I guess I am. Uh, so, anyway... <laughs> 
uh joining us today as always is the one the only uh robin say hi robin hi robin hello is that uh, robin yes, good, from good. The yes that it's is me. robin that is in <laughs> fact robin from the mocast and as always you know we have riley all right so hey boy, we're going ahead fuck and talk you. Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, hey, Riley, how you, the, the the second, the other co-host, uh, R- R- Riley. Yeah, what's up, dude? Hey, how everybody. Doing? How you doing? I'm doing just fine tonight. I'm feeling really good. I'm here with my friends, Mo and Robin. I We're, we're sitting on the couch together with our microphones to record the podcast. <laughs> it's it's going to be a good and time. We're just, and we're letting <laughs> you know, 500 comment in the freaking YouTube video gets a free t-shirt. All right. <laughs> now you legally have to. You get a you get a free no, promo code to fake grips dot stores slash mo diggity. You know what? Fuck you. <laughs> hey, fuck you. Hey, talking about talking shit about the fine fine people at fade grips. Okay. This video is sponsored by. <laughs> hey, dude. All right, I'm going to be honest with you. When I was first starting out, like I pimped the shit out of fucking fade grips. No one cared. No, like I had like one person buying my shit. It was Paul. Is your and fake on... dot store link still up? Is it still active? No, no, no. I have, Aww. I have not. Like, dude, like, cause people get bagged on hard for uh, uh for getting on the fake grips, cause apparently that's a scam that most beginner streamers and YouTubers and shit mm-hmm. fall for. Is the hey. If you buy this one little thing, we'll give you a full sponsorship. And you're like, hey, well, it's only five bucks, sure. And it turns out no one gives a fuck about buffet grips and all that shit. And then you have a friend who works in a plastics plant. He goes over there and checks it out. I was like, well, this is made with by junk plastic. I'm just letting you know right now. I actually work at a plant. We can research this stuff and break it down a little bit. This is shit plastic. Yeah, and you so, have yeah. to create a certain number of sales before you get paid out it's ridiculous yeah yeah stay but tuned anyway. for fade grips dot store slash riley the most the most lucrative fade grips fade grips fade, fade grips, grips. <laughs> fade grips promo link get your get your gang grips right here <laughs> your gang your grips. grips your gang grips so riley what's up you suggested the topic of the evening for today's podcast, and that is Regiggle Yes, Regiggle Yes, exactly. Regiggle Jim Giggle. The meme is here. <laughs> We've been memeing about this for a little while, but here it is. It's, a, it's MoCast 51 Religion. It's here. I could have swore that we've done a couple of podcast episodes based around religion. But I don't quite remember because it's been a couple of years since Have I started we? this stuff. I didn't, you know, I think we've talked about it a bunch, but I don't remember. How but, long you know, has the MoCast starring Mo, Robin, and Riley been a thing? Oh, uh, I think uh, I got co hosts about like episode six or seven, something like that. I mean, I'll have to go look it up on the YouTubes. But yeah, I think a lot of politics will inevitably lead to religion, but I don't think we've necessarily yeah, done an episode. Yeah, we've, we've definitely had our fair share of political discourse on this show. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You can't really All talk right. about conservatism without talking about religion. You can't quite talk about politics without talking about the cult of personalities and the uh, Jesus Christ-like figures that arise in our political scene. Like a yeah, like really, our former president. Yes, like a former. You know, normally I would oh, like Barack get onto you. Normally I would say like something <laughs> like kind of snarky, but no, uh, President Trump really was a cult of personality. I think Obama was too. Like the last two presidents we've had. Uh, well, if I really want to be honest, honest, I think Tom, uh, Bush or W had his time in the sun. Boy, he was just not charismatic enough to be a cult leader. No, Trump, he, he on the really... other hand, the most charismatic. No, no he... I, I think I think if if uh, Obama and Trump were like Magic the Gathering, like Planeswalker boss cards, I, I think their charisma would be like both like natural twenty, because Obama has fucking swagger. 
uh, fucking Trump has fucking you know a, 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 a few decades, a few decades. The unbridled the charisma industry. of a stale Cheeto. Hey, that stale Cheeto got elected at least for four years for a term, so it must be kind of charisma, you know, charismatic. He no, I'm, I'm, ju- I'm just ragging on him. He does have charisma. That's like the no, one no, thing no, he totally. Has. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it really is like the strongest thing he has is all this shit he's ever done on TV. But uh, hey, you guys remember when he fell down the stairs and then did a four-hour press conference saying why it was the stairs' fault and not his? You know, <laughs> Biden fell down the stairs. Hey, yeah, remember? Biden fell down the stairs, and then he just was like, oh, I fell down the stairs. It's a big deal. What is it with presidents and falling fell... down the fucking stairs? And then he, because they're all old as fuck, and we have this problem with, uh, with... I, I mean, I was making fun of Trump not for falling down the stairs, but for doing a big press conference after to explain his fall down the stairs. I think that's the ridiculous part of Trump. <laughs> Man, I guess I just don't remember that part. Like, I, I remember him, like, goofing a couple of times, but... Uh, I guess I just don't remember the stairs thing. I remember watching Biden a few weeks ago, dropping like once, then dropping twice, then the third time, boom, fucking got him. And we've all was been like, there. You've never oh, taken a spill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I kind of had an excuse though. I was drunk as shit. But you know, like I just, I'm, I'm clowning on Biden. I'm, I'm clowning on Biden. I, I don't really give a shit. It was a little funny to see like the memes. That came out immediately, and it's always it leads a thank you to the WWE and Vince McMahon with a it was me Austin it was me all along. Well, there was like a million fucking people at almost the same time fucking uh posting the picture of the stairs that Biden fell on, and then on top of Vince McMahon's head and with that it was me all along stairs. Ah. You know the, the the memes were funny. I enjoyed that. You thought it was a flight of stairs, but it was me, Dio. <laughs> it was me, Gary Motherfucking Oak. You oh, can't no. handle my. You can't. Oh no! My dun, dun, dun. Not Gary so, Oak. So I heard uh, uh, an idea that we've been uh, uh, banding around, uh, batting around a little bit was uh, before we get into our main podcast today. Uh, we were talking about. Uh, recording like a Pokemon Nuzlocke run or wh- whatever, uh, Robin, would you like to explain that? Oh shit! Riley, Did you want would us you to like explain to explain that, that on the show? Sure, sure. So, oh, well, I, I mean, I was just sort of making conversation. Okay, so yeah, that's fine. So, uh, yeah, I run this little challenge on the side. It's all inspired by uh, Blastburn Radio, which is another Pokemon podcast, which you should all follow, especially if you're a Pokemon fan. They're great, great people. Um, but the main premise of their show is that, so a Pokemon Nuzlocke is something that's like been around forever. It's a mm-hmm. challenge run of Pokemon where, uh, there's a couple of rules to make things harder. Uh, mainly, uh, you can only catch the first Pokemon you find in each new area. Uh, if you fail to capture that Pokemon, you get nothing. And, uh, if a Pokemon you're using goes down in battle, if it faints, it's considered dead and you got to box it or release it and never use it again. That sounds like some bullshit right there. I mean, like that sounds like it, that. Ex- that sounds extremely, extremely hard. And then again, like I have very little Pokemon uh, no. fucking experience. It, it sounds like it's going to be a tough challenge. When we do it, it's going to be a lot of fun. But it sounds like a very tough challenge. Yeah, I was about to say, Mo. I I remember describing this exact same thing you on stream, and you're like, "That sounds cool and fun." And now you're like, "That sounds fucking bullshit and hard." Okay, 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 (laughs) okay, okay, okay. Riley, what I was doing there was quote unquote filling time. I see. And now you just fucking called me out in front of everybody. Well, why you gotta be such a contrarian, Mo? Don't sass me in front of the internet. Yeah, the but, whole um, internet is watching me, and every time I get, like, you know, discredited... What, or like the 40 down, views we get on this show? <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, one um, of those, it only takes one autist to fucking ruin the bunch, you know? That's true, Not that's true. Up late. But, um... Yes, all we're doing is filling time, Riley. So, yeah, so, thank you for calling me out. <laughs> so, where Blast Burn Radio and where the challenge that I run comes into this is, um... They developed a point system for Nuzlocke's, which is designed for three people, a trio of people, to compete in a Nuzlocke, 
where they gain points for beating boss fights in the game and for beating each other in player versus player matches in between gyms, and they lose points for the death of their sweet, sweet children. So that is what the, we are doing. The, we're doing the MoCast Nuzlocke trio. We're playing Heart Gold and Soul Silver. That's the game that Robin said we should play, and I'm actually pretty excited to play it because it's a childhood game of mine. But I also know from Blastburn Radio that it's a hard and grueling Nuzlocke. So we'll see how that goes for, first of all, Mo, who's never done a Nuzlocke before. And second of all, me, who is very bad at Nuzlocke's historically. And more specifically, your sanity. <laughs> yes. So the thing about Heart Gold, Soul Silver, right, is there's a lot of stuff we have to, like, call in terms of, like, rules and, like, what we want to put on the table and what we want to take off the table. Because... <clears throat> There was a lot of battles in fucking Heart Gold and Soul Silver that would technically be worth points, but would be very time consuming for us to pursue. The main, the main offender of this is the gym leader rematches that uh, you can do. You can do them before the final boss, so they technically be on the table. You can. There are sixteen gym leaders in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which is more than the usual eight because they have a whole region's worth of post game. And you can also rematch all 16 of those gym leaders with harder teams later. Okay. Yeah, what's the so issue? That's... <laughs> the issue is that's going to take a lot of time. <clears throat> and also, some of the gym leader rematches are too low level to the point where you'll have to train an entire B team to fight them. Because, like, you have to progress farther up to, like, do the Johto Gym Leader Gym matches, which are, like, level 40, and you'll be level 50. So you gotta, like, train a whole B-team to fight those fuckers. But regardless, at least the main game's gonna be a lot of fun. And hopefully, you know, Mo kind of picks up on it pretty quickly. Which I hope I've so. seen happen. I've seen, I've seen it happen. People will not have a lot of experience and then pick it up super fast. Uh, we'll see how that goes for you. So, um, I'm hoping that uh it goes well for me because uh me and robin sort of talked about the rules like do it what rules we're going to keep and what rules we're not going to keep from my challenge the server that i run the grand nuzlocke world tour because that's sort of for like experienced nuzlockers as it were and uh we're gonna we're gonna keep we're gonna all the battle healing is allowed because we don't want mo to wipe horribly so (laughs) that will get me through it as well but we'll see. I'm going to be really, really surprised if I get past the first hour of this fucking challenge. If I get past the first hour of this fucking challenge, uh, I think I'll have a good time. You're allowed. I mean, you're allowed to restart, Mo. So even if you die on like the first boss battle the first time, you just pick. You just pick up your oh. fucking pants and you fucking keep going. You well, you lose points for the deaths of your Pokemon, so it it puts you at a deficit in the competition against us. But you can still restart. Which oh, really, okay. the only reason that's bad is because you have six Pokemon on your team. Robin, do not go in any more detail. I know where you're <laughs> going. Shut up. <laughs> All right. See, I, I didn't know that. I thought it was kind of a. I thought the 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 rub was you're one and done. You know. Well, you do and... lose the run. You have to restart the game, but you can restart the game. Oh, well, see, I, I didn't know that part. I thought we were just going to do one and whoever, like, lasts, whoever's, like, last man standing. No, you know, it's last entirely, our competition no, is entirely horrible. based on the point system. Oh, okay, okay, so, okay. So you can, you lose points for the deaths of your Pokemon when you wipe, but you get to, you know, pick up the pieces and start over and see if you can catch up. Okay, that makes sense. But anyway, I think we've I think we've nerded out about Nuzlocke's for too long. We'll have to I know we're gonna have to get on call with you, Mo, and like get your emulator set up and go over all the specific rules with you. But that's the gist of it. That's the gist of what me, Mo, and Robin are doing. And I'm sure you'll get regular reports on the MoCast hmm. of how well, this is going. Well, I do have some good news. Uh the internet company called me earlier today. And said that my uh, internet, uh, my my internet installation was moved up. So Saturday, uh, I will be getting my internet instead of this uh, shitty McDonald's fucking Wi-Fi internet. 
that I've been uh, subsisting on since I moved in here. Uh, looks like I'm getting it a little bit early, and I'm very, very happy for that. So hell yeah, hell yeah. We Fuck we can yeah, definitely dude. we can definitely hook up then and start talking because that's why I haven't been streaming or making really any kind of content whatsoever for like the last like oh, two shit. Two, last two and a half weeks. Uh, I've been uh just like watching Mo's... fucking Netflix and taking a break from all social media and internet because you know like I was really really stressing out hard because of it and i was like all right i need a i need a break and i had just been fucking watching gotham and and now i'm watching blacklist uh watched all the walking Dead <laughs> john era <series>. game grumps <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm gonna watch john era game grumps i keep saying that i i am and then i never do but i swear to god i am i'm gonna warn you right now the blacklist gets really horrible well, I, I've seen like good episodes. I've seen shitty episodes, but so far I'm really liking it. Though I'm going to be like for real, like if any of the shit, like if uh, uh, what's his name's fucking character, uh, fucking James Spader's character existed in real life, do we'd have hung him by, we'd have crucify him by his ball sack. And he's the whole reason the show is even still going. He's the only good thing about that show. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm having trouble. Like, I I, I like the the uh, the head honcho guy, but I I don't I don't really like anyone else because I've seen better acting in NCIS uh, than I have this fucking show. And NCIS has some like terrible fucking acting, but it does well sometimes. Like it's Liz just... just gets to be the most unbearable, indecisive character. <laughs> like it, it her motivations are just so unknown i i have no idea what she's th like her motivations change on like the drop of a dime i have no idea what the fuck she's ever doing yeah i don't know why i'm still watching this goddamn show <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's uh from what i've watched the last like you know few years uh she's not a very consistent character but uh uh the the first i just saw the pilot episode today of uh blacklist it was fucking really really good and i really liked it a lot and I'm kind of hoping that it gets a little, you know, it does get better. I'm sure there's like good it will get better and then worse. Seasons. Yeah, yeah, like uh, some seasons of the uh, of the new episode. The uh, previous uh, season, the finale, uh, was filmed as COVID started, so half of it uh, animated, is yeah is animated. Oh, this is yeah, a current show. This is a current show. Oh yeah. See, Whenever Mo talks about shows that he's watching, I always assume they're from like the fucking eighties or some shit. No, he's well, he's old. like eight seasons behind. So, yeah, I I'm literally on like see uh, 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 episode seven or eight on season one today. Wait, so this is a live action show that they turned into fucking animation because of COVID. they half animated because... the season finale of last season because wow. they didn't uh, cuz covid and lockdown fucking hit them right in the middle and it of was making... really bad animated it was like polygon yeah it, it was it, i've i've seen better fucking I've looks like a fucking CGI nintendo 64 game it looked oh, like um what's what's that video game the horror game where you're in a school with the guy with the ruler oh, fucking uh, baldy's basics yeah it yeah. literally <laughs> looked like that it looked like baldy's basics <laughs> fuck me in the ass and call me Patricia. <laughs> So, religions, re religions. Some Google people goals. like religion. Some people don't like religion. Riley, what's your thoughts on religion? So <laughs> it's hard. Okay, so the general concept of religion, right? Just the concept that we didn't spirituality, just maybe. Yeah, but just the concept of the fact that we didn't just fucking come from an exploding star, right? Like there is a fucking force out there that made us it's kind of hard for me to not feel that way like i don't really subscribe to any one religion just because they all come with a fucking sack of dumb bullshit like they all have their own stupid yeah. fucking rules that are absurd like you know christianity you can't have gay people no 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 the gay people bad and then, you know, there's every other religion where fucking I don't even know where to begin. It's just. I don't know, like, I feel like there has to, to be 
There has to be <laughs> Robin. Let's not go any further into what I just said. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> but um, it's just I feel like there has to be something that like made us. Like we can't just have spawned one day. I I well, think, but it's hard so, for me to. So do you believe it's more of an all-encompassing deity that waved his magic and went swibbly babbly boo, and then boom, we showed up, or? Is it more of a Prometheus type sort of a seeding of uh, life, where uh, he like dissolves it, it, it dissolves itself and seeps into the water stream and then boom seeds, you know, human life? Or do you think we just uh, it's just straight up evolution? It's it's hard for me to pin that down. Like I feel I've always like you know I was raised like a church boy, so I like it's hard for me to shake that. Like, I obviously don't agree with some of the contents of the Bible, but I feel like you just remove all the fucking anti-gay and anti-women's rights shit from the Bible, and then I'm cool with it. That sounds like a decent explanation for why we exist. Just without all the homophobia, please. Well, what would you... Would you say you've ever had, like, a bad time at a church before? Because I've I've had a bunch of bad times, quote unquote, at a church. But like, uh, uh, have you? Would you say you you've ever had something like that happen to you? Like, you ever get beat up, uh, by someone in the parking lot or something like? Well, not in the parking lot, I guess. Like, Jesus Christ, some, Mo. <laughs> Jesus, well, what kind of church are you going? Okay, to? no, no, no. That that actually happened. To <laughs> welcome me to before. Texas. Yeah, welcome to fucking you know like a, a upper, a, you know upper near the Panhandle, Texas, man. Nah. I, I, I had some little bastards fucking growing up that used to bully the shit. I, like, I used to hate going to church because, like, uh, there would just be some people that would just fuck with me. And once in a while, I'd pop off and I'd run as fast as I can, but they fucking, like, would catch up to me, punch me in the stomach, and kick my ass a bunch of times. And, you know, I got a little bit better and faster at running, but I, I never got – I was always a fat little kid. So I never got to run away that fast, you know what I mean? But yeah, that's that's definitely happened uh before. No, so what what denomination, Riley, uh did you uh uh grow up as? Were you uh, Catholic, Catholic and Methodist? Yeah. Or... Catholic. Oh, uh, oh wow, gra- wow, wow. My grandmother's a big Catholic. She used to take me to church when I was young. Um I went to like Sunday school and shit. Like she was serious about that. Like I it's just she kind of stopped dragging me there when she realized that I really didn't give a fuck. But that took until I was like probably like fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but did you I never... go to the, Did you go, go to the uh, the regular mass or the insanely early mass uh, when you were going to a uh, Catholic church? Oh, we went like. Sunday morning mass, like we, it was like ten thirty a.m. Like, oh, okay, so you went normal people hours. Yeah, not uh, like crazy hours. Oh, dude, like, cause uh, I used to be a Baptist, and I converted to being a Methodist, right? And we went, we when we went to church, it was when everyone was waking up to go to fucking Sunday school, because all the churches in my area had sort of a gentleman's agreement is. You know, okay, we don't want to be here all day because football season is starting or basketball or sports ball is starting. And I, I, I love me some Jesus and I love me some God, but I love me some Lakers and Chicago Bulls. Can we I'm trying to get remember. the hell out of here? I'm trying to remember. Like, I know I went to Sunday school. I'm trying to remember if I did Sunday school. I think it was done, like, for kids instead of Mass. Like, while the adults were at Mass, we were at Sunday school, I think is how it works. That sounds heretical. Sometimes my grandmother was like, that's not enough. So we're going to go to Saturday fucking afternoon mass. And I'm like, "Uh, why? (laughs) Because they had Saturday afternoon mass at that church as well. Um, But I might just be remembering it wrong. But this is a time in my life that was a long time ago. But um, the point is, Mo, you asked me earlier if I ever had any bad church experiences. Nobody ever beat me up in the parking lot in church. First of all, that's well, not, not in the happen. parking lot. More of the side of the because I used to go to like what was considered now a fucking mega church because mm-hmm. I never knew like the idea of like I thought all churches were just this big when I was a kid, 
and then I, I moved down fucking South Texas where all the poverty and drugs are. And uh, it turns out, like, yeah, there's a. I, I look at my fucking RV. The, this would be a church down here. So there, there's like a, di I guess a, a difference between, you know, where where the uh, between churches wherever the money is. I suppose I never knew, noticed that until like my church, my old church, uh, Red Baptist Church in Burleson or near Burleson, Texas. Uh, they uh, they spent all of the congregation's money that we were told was going to go help the poor, and mm. around town, and instead we built a fucking wing. An extra fucking large wing for the church, and well, uh, we we're, didn't. Stick we're helping around. the poor by giving them more church to be in, to pray, to not be poor anymore. It's like, sir, like, oh, <laughs> go, good Lord God, like, I'm, I'm so glad you, you up the, the pastors, the priest's salary here to at least a hundred k a year. Would you uh, maybe see your way into give me some fucking like you know fungins or some fucking spaghettios or some shit? We need a we need a holy sim stimulus check. <laughs> yeah, we, we need. <laughs> I, I need like one of them divine fucking stimulus checks that you and your friends in the Democratic Party are holding on to, and I need it too sweet because uh, you know little Jimmy Timmy and my little girls, you know the father, they need the son, and the so holy bad. stimmy. The father and son and the spaghettios. There we go. Yep, exactly. But um, so I actually never really had like a negative experience at church at all. Like I even had fun at church sometimes. It just it kind of got annoying to like hear about all this shit that I really wasn't paying attention to every Sunday. Like you know, I've always the thing about church and the reason why I enjoyed it when I was young is because you know I've always been like a performative. I was very performative as a child. Like I've talked about my past in like choir and theater and shit. So like they would sing songs at church and I would get super into it because I was a fucking child and I loved to fucking sing. So that was what kept me engaged throughout church. I didn't really pay attention when they sat there and read the fucking gospel. I just was like, ah, come on. Like it's but and there were the parts where like the thing that pissed me off most about church, like I, I could have tolerated church probably to this day. If they didn't make you keep like standing up and sitting down and kneeling down and standing up, oh, I hate like, that shit. I hate that shit. <laughs> like, just let me sit. I'll listen to your fucking Bible talk. Just let me sit. I don't want to have to stand up every ten minutes and then sit down, stand up, sit down. <laughs> Did you have uh, one of those uh, uh, fucking priests that would shake down the congregation for donos? <laughs> I mean, they would come around with the fucking like bowl, but it was never. It was like the, he, they would never start up. The Lord asks you to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And no, not really. They would just pass around the bowl and people would put money in it. Like Maybe render a little respectful. bit to the church, if you know what I mean. <laughs> My carburetor is going out and, oh, Lord, <laughs> I need me to get, get it fixed. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I need that holy <laughs> carburetor money. Because <laughs> my shit is going out. I've had this fucking car since the 1980s. I have not updated because I have not had any money to get it. Please give until it hurts. It's funny because um, you're, you're doing this very American accent for this priest, and one of my one of my main memories of church is the fact that like one of our main like priests, the one who did most of the service, like I loved the guy to death. He was a great guy. He was very he. He was very good. I don't want to say this because of the current connotations of priests on the internet. I'm saying that he was very good with kids, and we all know what people think about priests on the internet. Oh, not in that okay, way. okay, okay, not okay. Not in that okay. way. In the good way, he was good with kids, not in the weird way. And Well, you, you are know, Catholic, so like that is was, <laughs> considered a little bit heavier than most. He's a very... The 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 point I was gonna make is he has a he had a very foreign accent. It was very hard to understand the gospel, even when I was trying to. <laughs> oh man, that's like a one thing <laughs> that was we we've had some uh we had a few like a uh, priests come in from like a uh, oh man not not Uzbekistan uh, Czechoslovakia. <clears throat> First time I think I ever met a European person was uh, in Baptist church. Uh, someone came from uh, Czechoslovakia and was just talking and talking about like, you know, what's going on. And they passed the hat around the room a little bit, you know, it gave some like, you know, decent money and all that shit. But uh, uh, talking about how 
like let's just take Christianity for instance, talking about how like Americans view Christianity versus how some other European countries view and uh, celebrate and promote uh, what they think is their proper brand of Christianity or two different type of fucking things, you know? Because I, I kind of like, because of course we'll talk about Christianity pretty heavily in this show, but because that we're, we're in America, that's where it predominantly is. Yeah, that's that's the religion we're all familiar with. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're really like, like we, we love paying lip service to, you know, my diversity and inclusivity but i'm going to be really really honest if it weren't for the if it weren't for the internet how many like buddhist jews and muslims would you even really know like going along in your travels probably i have heard on lot. the grapevine that buddhist buddhism is the most based religion that is what i've heard it's really based That's what i'm told i don't think so i, I kind of have a couple of problems with it like because uh the one the way that well, you, the 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 one the one way that was told to me by a Buddhist person was, uh, you know, they're very, uh, uh, oh, 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 what's the word, uh, uh, passive or pacifist. They're very pacifist and like, well, dude, like if someone's beating your ass, you defend yourself, right? And you're like, no. It's like, well, fuck, I, I just I can't like go follow a religion that would like not allow me to defend myself. And that, you know, I just, uh, I'm not really into Buddhism that much. Like, I, I've read some of the books on it. I, I've listened to uh, their, their leaders talk about it. I'm like, eh, I guess it's just I mean, it's the foundation thing. of, like, half of our modern, like, It's not, I mean, therapy. it's not hard to be the most based religion, considering there's not really a great pool to pick from. So me well, saying Buddhism is the most based religion really isn't that much of an accolade. <laughs> well, all right, yeah. So, so you're you're setting the bar pretty low as far as being, you know, totally based and cool and stuff. Yes, because no religion is based and cool. So the least not based. I'm saying that Buddhism. Could is I introduce the least you to the Greeks? Based. Please do, Robin. Please tell me about <laughs> the Greeks. That's some fucking cool ass religion right there. Oh, dude, I I love the uh, the pantheon type of uh, uh religions. You know where it's a uh, w- w- what's the the word for multiple gods? Yeah, I mean you got it. Well, there's polytheistic, multiple but gods. also yeah, yeah, poly- polytheism, but also yeah, pantheon's correct. Oh, okay. Well, I was I was thinking of the uh, the technical like fucking like a a, a quarter word. Uh, for, yeah, it's polytheistic. For... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I used to I used to read a lot about Greek and Roman mythology when I was a kid. And uh it was it was it's something I think is more I think the the old religions are far more fascinating than the modern day religions. Because with the modern day religions you can kind of see right through it and you can see like, you know, where the scams and who's scamming who and like who the leaders are and who the leaders really aren't, but they're the ones on TV, you know, you kind of see through the facade really, really quick. But with uh, the older religions, like it wasn't as bad. I mean, I'm sure that if we lived back in those days, we'd find plenty wrong with it, but still it was kind of cool to have Zeus and Odin and Thor and Loki and, and all these other types of uh, uh, really interesting uh, 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 gods and faiths that were more, more, uh, more or less systematically stomped out by uh, Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism, yeah. and Islam. I mean, they, they, uh, fucking, uh, the the modern day religions. Like uh, the reason why I'm an atheist these days because I read this book called the Big Book of Gods, and uh, these, uh, the the book showed me with all these great, really wonderful. Uh, religions that were systematically stamped out, oppressed, or fucking, uh, you know, bloodily fucking put down by Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and Buddhism. And it's like the big four fucking steamrolled all of these faiths and all of these cultures. And I'm not, I, 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 I kind of have like a problem with that, how that's never going to be, uh, the justice will never be served. To the people oh yeah the, the, the russian gods like, seemed <laughs> super cool but it got completely stomped out by christianity i don't know anything about the russian gods do you is that like nobody one? does nobody does damn the, there are there are like whispers but there's like there's obviously nobody directly who knows you know 
much about them. And you can see artifacts that still exist, like, you know, carvings and totems and things like that. That's fucking crazy. Oh, yes, crazy. the gods of vodka and communism. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, for, it's further back than that, but... You know. It's actually kind of crazy, like how something can last like hundreds of thousands of years, and a bad fucking summer, a bad fucking war is all that'll take to fucking uh, er erase most of that uh, culture, that religion's history. Like you, you look at the the old battles of like you know ancient Greece and Rome, and hell, even the modern day with uh, ISIS burning down uh, and, and bombing and tearing down uh, ancient sites. In the Middle East, uh, carving up fucking paintings that we'll never uh, that we'll never see again. Uh, it, it's it's fucking insane how uh, how like religion has just really promoted the the absolute worst, but the absolute best also in humanity. Because I don't think that all religion is bad all the time. I just think it's bad most of the time, with seasons of like decency and and friendship and kindness peppered very unfortunately very lightly uh into the fucking badness you know but um oh well me and riley i think talked about like pretty well like uh, how we grew uh, how we uh, grew up or fuck let me try that again <laughs> you got this. yeah sorry uh fuck man at uh, 29 30 uh blah 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 so Riley and I pretty much talked extensively. Uh, Robin, uh, did you grow up religious at all? Did you have a denomination? Yeah, I grew up Roman Catholic. Roman Catholic. All right. Yep. So, like, it, it, w w what's the difference? And you don't have to get really specific if you don't remember. But what's the difference between you know, like Riley Catholic and Roman Catholic, Robin Catholic? Well, well, the difference between Catholic. I, don't, I mean, I. Riley could have been Roman Catholic. To be I, fair. I think the been. only I don't I don't know the, the specific denomination. Uh, Roman Catholics recognize the Pope as the authority. That's the difference. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because I don't usually, remember like, hearing shit about the Pope, so I don't know. Yeah, if you don't recognize the Pope as the authority, then you probably weren't Roman Catholic. Oh, okay. I was kind of hoping it would be something a little bit cooler than that. Uh, but no, I that's pretty much really the big is... difference. Oh, okay, cool. Because isn't the experience... isn't the Pope pretty based right now? Didn't the Pope like like Instagram thoughts well, or something? It's it's another situation <laughs> where like pretty based for a Pope. Okay. Yes, some still a Pope. Was, I mean, at least he's not like fucking Pope Palpatine, where like every fucking like shot of him it has him looking like the most evil motherfucker on the goddamn planet. Like, I don't know if y'all seen this one shot of him with uh, the glasses on and the winds picking up his, uh, like, blowing on him a little bit. And it toughs out his looks fucking like shoulder pads. He looks like it, like he's about to use the fucking force, like, palp uh, like a, a dark Looks like he's about to spit venom into your eyes. Yeah, he looks like he's about to fucking destroy the congregation. And, like, he looks like prime fucking evil, you know? But, um, what would be... A negative experience you've had going to church and what would be i guess a positive reason uh or a positive uh time that you, you've had going uh going to church like what would be those if you have any i don't know my my experience is kind of similar to riley's like i didn't really have like any horrible experience i didn't get beat up in a church parking lot or anything you know <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, like I said, it wasn't a church parking lot, it was, like, next no, to the church parking lot. No, I don't lot. care what part of the church it was, or if it was church adjacent. I have never been beaten up in a parking lot. Near a church. Well, there were fucking bullies. Like, this is before, like, everyone was like, hashtag, please no bully. I got the fuck beat out of me everywhere I fucking went, man. So, like, yeah, it, it, church apparently was that. I didn't know that was going to be so humorous. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So like, a uh, pretty much good time, good times all around. Then, uh, did it you was ever, fine. Did you ever? It like, was just uh, like a really annoying obligation at a point, oh. at a certain point. Like as I got older. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I think like, that was the main reason I fell out of it. It's just like I had to do this shit every Sunday. No thanks. I don't. I don't know that we did every single Sunday. It might have been like once a month, like the the big boy mass, you know, like once a month. We would mm. occasionally miss mass just because, like, we had other shit. The going first on. Sunday like, of the month. Whenever we could go, we would go. Like, I yeah, think we did the, the first Sunday of the month, and then I did CCD for a long time when I was a kid. 
I think like the most mass we ever missed was after my grandfather passed because my grandma was like, my grandma can't drive, so she was like, shit, you had no way to get to mass now. <laughs> like, <laughs> that wasn't her main concern, obviously, but that was just a problem we had for a while, is we could only get there when other people were also going who knew us. Right. And then eventually, and when I was I younger, like, oh, my grandmother was on a, uh, she was on oxygen. So she actually had to have a uh, representative of the church come to the house to perform like mass for them, you know, because they can't That's make cool it. That's cool that they do that. Yeah. That's really so nice. My grandparents would get uh, this lady that lived close by. Her name was Norma. And she would she would come by and do the whole church thing every Sunday for them. That's I guess really nice. One, one cool thing about, I guess, the uh, branch of uh, Judaism that my... Uh, my grandmother is a part of because uh well technically i'm kind of i'm 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 a confirmed methodist but i'm a practicing atheist but i'm also like a uh uh culturally or or what is it uh racially or whatever like i'm supposed to be considered jewish because of blood no. lines, which i i think is kind of funny but i i'm not going to be a practicing like Jewish person or or Methodist anymore, but uh, uh, my 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 grandmother had to go to the hospital because she needed some surgery on her lungs, right? So uh, uh, there was a, a priest there, and the priest was talking to her, and she uh, told her uh, he told him, uh, or she told him, well, hey, I'm Jewish. Do you guys happen to have a rabbi? And he goes, no, but let me see if I can scrounge something up. Well. I guess they kind of forgot about her. So my grandmother contacted her rabbi in California and he was on the phone with like most Texas fucking rabbis, uh, like within like 10 minutes of them talking to each other. And he got a rabbi sent down to her at that fucking, uh, at the hospital that she's at in Houston. Cause there just happens to be like several nearby. I thought that was really cool. Like the other religions can learn from like a, it, 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 I'm saying this in a polite way, but Jewish ingenuity, you know, being able to put shit together real quick and, and all Ain't that nothing stuff. like a good Jew, I always say. Oh, yeah, but in a nice way, <laughs> it, in proper context, too, because I am not going down this fucking hole for no way, no how. I made my Mo, jokes. Just so but... you know, just so you know, Mo, at some point in this conversation, you will be obligated for by force if needed to do some atheist fed posting because we know it's in your heart we know it's in your soul we <laughs> I, try, I try not to fucking fed post my atheism anymore because like it made me a real fucking shitty person and i i was sort of uh I, I, i'm not blaming reddit it just happens to be that i was always yeah. on our atheism and i sort of saw like it's a so trend cringe that, yeah, dude, I totally like uh, the shittier the people in that subreddit became. And since I was sort of embedded in there and I didn't notice the shittier that I became, like I was like, you know, for the longest time, I was like burn all the synagogues, churches, mosques and fucking temples down and fucking just like squash religion. You know, I it was got so of... bad at a point that the atheists were shoving their atheism in my face more than the religious people were shoving their religion in my face. Oh, yeah, like, I, I actually have more these days to bitch about atheism than I do religion, because I think in time I, I have been able to rectify and calm myself down and chill out. Like, I still have my problems with religion, but uh, at least the religious aren't suing one another over fucking uh, Christmas decorations at City Hall, which I don't see as a religious symbol, but I see as a, uh, a, a, a cultural culture's holiday. A symbol of another culture's fucking holiday because we all do celebrate Christmas. And yeah, I'm talking about the manger scene. That's not like particularly in Joyce, in, in, in Joyce, uh, 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 embracing and promoting openly Christianity all, all over all others. But uh, this militant atheism that's that's sprung up from the internet and sprung up from uh, uh, from society has become very just disgusting like it's a shadow of its former self like i see a lot more fascists in in the atheist movement than i do anywhere else right now and it's it's fucking terrible like this is i what saw I a video this, on, this is uh, what i helped promote and this is what i got nowadays like damn 
That's brutal. Yeah, I saw a video on Reddit where it was some some dude was like filming in the like queue at CVS, and uh, the title of the post was like, "This is outrageous! Like you shouldn't be able to do this!" Like, blah blah blah. And and it was literally like, you know, the cashier like rung rung the dude up and like bag the items and then at the end of the interaction the cashier said have a blessed day oh and and the dude was like freaking out that like he said blessed like oh yeah dude like it, it must And it's like I I have a problem when atheism is like you're you're like getting mad at someone for telling you to have a blessed day when like the the real like thing you should be focusing on it's like the religious institutions and not the religious people yeah, like you know, up with religious people for the most part, down with the mo- the majority of the religious institution, man. But yeah, I, I I've seen I've seen stuff like that, and it, it really does fucking break my heart because like uh, when I was like heavy into my atheism, I thought it was going to be like, hey, so are we just going to promote like stuff that we want and that we want to do? Because I thought that it was a more libertarian. Uh, fucking thing you know like hey well we're not going to segregate ourselves from society but we're not going to invite society in either you know sort of like our fucking spot because i think that everyone has their whatever god-given state given or whatever given right to have quote unquote your own spot i don't have like a problem with that um but like these people it, it turned into this uh uh, let, let's go into other spots, take it over, and push out everyone else out of their spot. And so, and when people complain, uh, call them fanatics or uh, fucking like gaslight them on public forums and shit. And it's uh, there's no like real you don't ho- see these people being held to account uh, like hardly ever, unless it's like a, a a public thing like on Twitter. Like someone gets busted, like diddling some fucking fifteen year old or something, which is usually the case with a lot of these like weirdo, militant neckbeard fucking atheists. And I'll be honest, I, I think atheism is uh has a uh, uh propped up a lot more school shooters and mass shooters than I, I think religions have. Well, I guess depending on your point of view, because like one has. One has an organization backing it, uh, backing its violence. The other one just has, you know, uh, crazy YouTube videos uh, fucking backing its violence, you know. But anyway, there was a point I was supposed to make with that. But I, 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 I do, I will say, like, I, I've seen a lot, a lot more atheist uh, uh, mass shootings than I have, you know, religious, quote unquote, mass shootings or religiously influenced mass shootings that weren't tied directly to war or warfare. Yeah, I was going to say, we could we could go to the Crusades if you want. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 because, you know, like, you, I, I, we could do, like, Columbine a million times, and that won't fucking hold a candle to the fucking Crusades or the Inquisition or anything like that. Uh, I, I guess in, like, modern-day times, maybe it's uh, uh, good times breed weak people and hard times breed strong people, and maybe, like, well, like sometimes if you read like into history, a lot of the times where there was more, uh, 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 uh what what was the word I'm looking for? I guess humanist views. You start to see a little bit of the fabric of society unravel just a tad bit. I'm not saying that it's completely its fault. I do see that there is. It, it does show up when the fall starts, though. You know, and then suddenly when people start getting fucking fanatical again people fucking lockstep and everything eventually writes itself out but that shit fucking happens in between them i think yeah. that's what i'm i'm afraid of the most is is not the stuff leading up to it it's it's the aftermath of everything like after the walls fucking crumble and the uh and the institutions are burned down to the fucking ground you know what's left the fucking ashes it's like at the end of oh yeah it's like that. It's like at the very end of Pink Floyd's the movie The Wall, where it's just the fucking. It was the last shot of the movie as a kid pouring out a Molotov cocktail, and the music starts to fucking play, and as it freezes on him, that's how I feel. That's what the aftermath's gonna be. 
Here's a question for all of you. Do you think uh, religion or lack of religion will cause the eventual like a world uh, next next world conflict like world war three for example i feel like i don't think it's gonna have to do inherently with religion yeah well looking at the like the 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 social and political climate do you do you see an increase in, in influence of religion or do you think it's more uh uh, other things like finance and uh, economic and and other things having to do with uh, uh with, with the, the the push for the fucking war the maybe the conflict and le- a lot less religion or something like that i don't know what the fuck i mean <laughs> i don't know i think the only difference that it makes having like a religious leader is that they have something to blame or like use as their justification for whatever act they're about to commit you know, if like, oh, well, we we nuked so-and-so country, but we did it because they were bad, and God says Jesus bad guys are bad. Too. Yeah, God says bad guys are bad. Yeah, or God wills it. God wills it, Jesus. And like, an, an atheist leader would do the same thing and just be like, yeah, fuck them. They suck. Well, I... I we didn't okay. like them, so they went boom. Yeah, I guess the justifications are, or I, I guess the actions and the 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 end results are the same. It's just the wording to get to those end results are pretty much just the only thing that are different. And I but, think it's uh, going to be a long time before we have a president that isn't, you know, some form of Christian. Is Joe I'm Biden sorry. some form of Christian? Yeah, I, I think, sure yeah, he I, is. Yeah, I think so. Like, uh. A lot of people sort of speculate whether or not, like, uh, Trump or Obama were more or less agnostic or atheist because, like, because I think personally the both of those presidents, I think they paid lip service to religions. But and I think they did like this, you know, the all the photo. I I think a lot of presidents do that. You think so? Yeah. Because, I mean, I want to clarify that what I mean by it's going to be a long time before we have a president that isn't Christian. What I mean is a president who doesn't portray the act of being a Christian. I, I kind of feel that Trump did that a little bit more than any other president has only because like, it, it wasn't like a, I, I, maybe it was different for Obama. Maybe his schedule was, uh, wasn't full or maybe he just didn't care. But I see like, a I, I've seen like Trump do all the, uh, the photo op stuff, but never really like, showing up in churches too often and uh, like like bush did like i i believe that uh, like w was a fucking fundamentalist christian right i believe i kind of believe that fucking uh, uh bill clinton w- was a uh, kind of a fundy too and if he wasn't a fundy his cabinets definitely was and so and, you know oh uh, yes uh, our dear william clinton what a guy Yes, yes. What what a guy. Thank you. Thank you, Riley. No, <laughs> I'll just fuck with you, man. Uh yeah, I I I don't know. Like it, it would be it would be nice to have an atheist or, or agnostic even uh a person as a, as a leader of, of the fucking nation. But I'm See, also agnosticism is based. That's where it's at. I I don't know. I, I think it's fence sitting. Like done to like you know the the laziest How? degree, well, sitting on the fence of base and cringe. There, there's no way to prove or disprove gods. Well, yeah, but you're also like you gotta you gotta factor in the philosophical uh, portions of religion as well, and really like, philosophers are inherently agnostic. Well, I'm sorry, but I I, I don't I, I don't know. Like I I, I kind of look at it. Like, uh, you know, you probably believe in something like John Q. Public, don't you? Well, yeah, I believe in some stuff. Well, okay, then. Like, what do you believe in? Oh, well, I just don't know. Like, well, fuck. <laughs> you know, like, it's it's hard to, like, advance spiritually and philosophically when we have, like, such a large contingent of the populace that— there, There's a lot of well, things that I think are true if there is a god. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a lot of things I think 
are probably not true if there is a god, but, but I don't inherently know if there is or is not a god or gods. Right? Like, if I, I, if I think whatever god exists is personified, right? Like, yeah. the Christian god is personified. Right, right? There could be, like, the like some omnipresence that it like sure that that could be a thing it's not a personified god but if it's personified i don't think it is a single god so you think there are many hands at the wheel trying to drive instead of just the one or two there are either many hands or it's some unpersonified omniscience do you think that there's ever a way that we can prove that a god or even just like a higher state of being? Do you think there's the a way only to way prove to prove it that? would be for the gods, the god or gods to, you know, make themselves known? Guys, I have some news. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Did you I, have uh, you found I, Christ? Uh, Is that what you're about? To not tell? only have I found Christ, I also am Christ. <laughs> The the Mo MoCast exclusive news. You found God. It is me. I am God for real. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> Breaking news. Okay, Riley. Hit us with your breaking news, homie. That's the breaking news. I'm God. I am God in real life. For real. I created you. I am God. This just in. Riley's been fired from the MoCast. <laughs> Here's the reason why. Because... Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. He's out. No. no, I'm just playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, you're just a fucking goofball, you silly son of a bitch. No, I'm and, not. A... You know, listen. You can choose not to believe it. You can choose to be a non-believer. But at the end of the day, I am. I am the judge. I am the judgment of who. Who goes to heaven and who goes to hell and Mo? I think there's a fiery pit with your name on it. Oh, come on, man. Can you just fucking let me, like, float on, like, a cloud of tits or something? You know, I might consider that. Like, cloud of nice tits, too. Not some bullshit ones, like some fucking crack tits or something. Like, I don't just want a, ones, like, you know, bum, trying to bum smoke. gross tits. What, like, what hey, happened when I stood hey. up for a second? Uh -oh. <laughs> it's like, hey, you got a cigarette there, big boy? I'm like, no, I don't. God. Oh man, like, what if, what if God really is real, and we're disappointed? Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. That, like, well, that's that was what I was gonna get to. Is if if there was a single personified God, like, man, that'd be pretty fucked up. Well, like the Christian like, God is not good. No, not really at all. Like he fucking every like, time, like a, a little like fucking three year old girl has like some kind of fucking stage four cancer. It's like, oh well, it's all God's plan. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? This is horrible. And I, I really hate that uh, other religious people like love to rag on Christians for uh, Christian science. When I hear plenty of people in like all, all the religions of the Middle East and. And even some in the East who uh, fucking say exactly Christian the science freaking pretty thing. damn bad, though. Well, yeah, so so is a lot of stuff in the Middle East, though. I, I don't want to be the, like the young earthers. See, well, like there's a lot of stuff in Christianity that you could just sort of like roll your eyes at and sort of like ignore, like the young earth shit or the uh, or, or the uh, well, I guess it would be the young earth. I don't even know what the, the Catholic Church's people. official stance on that is. On young Earth. Well, I would be surprised if the Catholic the Church fuck ever fucking took a Earth? stance on anything besides. Oh, okay. Evolution. So evolution is inherently uh, uh, contradictory to uh, Catholicism. So evolution couldn't have happened. And in Catholicism, the Earth has only existed for five thousand years or something. Okay. Or the or the world as we know it. So the, the the world can only be five thousand years old, or whatever the fight. You know, I'm probably you know off by could be seven thousand at most. Is is how old they think the the world is. So they don't believe in dinosaurs. Like dinosaurs are like fucking the the bones were like planted or some shit. 
Yeah, the devil put dinosaur bones here. I fucking yeah. love that theory. What if it's the like dinosaur God... bones are just the bones of Jesus? <laughs> well, Jesus has got like well, Jesus has got some explaining to do because Christ has like Jesus you know a, a three horn fucking time. head. Okay, I think see, there are a few places that claim to have Jesus. See, that would be fucking base to shit. Like you know, T Rex Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like it's a fucking roar from Jurassic Park, but it's like, behold my glory, behold my glory. Oh. Like, dude, like I would fear that. I would fear and respect that, and I would worship that. Or Raptor Jesus, even. You know, for all of you who are born in the the mid two thousands and remember that meme of Raptor Jesus. But yeah, uh, like a uh, uh, Riley, like. What would you do? Like, uh, what would your thoughts be if you if you saw like a deity or quote unquote the deity, and you were disappointed? Well, I mean, uh, as I established, I am the deity, and I'm very. So, how do you feel when you look in the mirror? Yeah, really? <laughs> I'm very depressed and hate myself. So apparently, I'm not very thrilled about the idea of the, the one deity, because I look at myself in the mirror and I say, "You could do more." You could do more, but you you sit on your fucking throne, on your godly throne, and you don't do shit. What if God and Jesus sort of had like a sitcom where God the God is and like, Jesus you know, show? Yeah, like Jesus is like you know like a well, it's it's very odd coupleish, you know, like a God is a party goer guy. Like I'm trying not to reference fucking Family Guy so much, but it's immediately what I fucking think of. It's uh, uh, like the Family Guy, God and Christ. Uh, fucking now, Mo, I'm surprised you didn't bring up the difference between like Christianity in the U.S. versus Christianity in the South, because it's pretty different. Where oh, it's we like we do things a little differently down here in the South. Yeah, where it's like the only thing that matters is Jesus. <laughs> we still have that here, but it has uh, gotten well. I wouldn't say progressive. Some parts, some parts of Texas have gotten more progressive. To be I, fair, I wouldn't say like you know progressive in the progressive like Californian sense. It's a uh, progressive in the sense of uh, like I've told on this show before. You know, we used to have the fucking KKK here, and we couldn't get rid of them because you know, the like cool kids uh, club. Yes, the, yes, yes, Riley. <laughs> and the and cool Mo, club. Mo, but when did when did you this, quit the KKK? Well, it was around like four thirty <laughs> on a Friday in like about nineteen ninety eight. You know, it was about to anyway. Shush. No, but uh, all we did really was just uh, wait for time to kill them, and that's how like that's how most generations have gotten through most uh, southern bigotry. I, I think it's just time fucking makes fools of us all or kills us all, whichever analogy you want. So it's it's not really really bad here not at least in texas i mean i can't say the same for like alabama and mississippi and shit because that's a you know that's a whole other fucking kind of dog and pony show that i'm not involved in sweet home alabama, alabama. Da, da, but uh yeah man it's uh it's it's yeah i mean cool. my my it's... further south Aside from, like, you know, Florida, but that was Disney, so it doesn't really count. But, yeah, I got, like, the furthest south I've gone is, like, Georgia. Oh, Georgia? Georgia? Georgia's really nice. It is. And, like, all the religious people there are just kind of, like, easygoing, you know, Jesus is based. Yeah, people. like, you get to those uh, towns with a population of 5,000 and more. It's a lot better than, like, say, in Vider, Texas. You know, a little bit south of uh, central Texas, but not qu quite fucking north to be like rich oil snobs. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, uh, Vider, Texas has a holiday where it celebrates the day they ran the last black person out of town. And Holy all of fuck. The... Yeah, 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 dude. It, it's, it's pretty fucking bad. Uh, they have that and a lot of the surrounding country. Uh, countries god uh the surrounding fucking counties uh in that area have uh you know turned their eyes not just on the minority man but basically on anyone else who they deem not cool so 
you get some big old long haired goofy dude with a fucking beard and like a fucking Pantera shirt on, you know, you get fucked with by the law a lot, man. So uh, that's back in 2004. I made it a point to never set foot in that area again. So I don't know how bad or good it's gotten, but yeah. It's know, gotten man. better though. How how do they do religion down there in Florida, uh, Riley? I don't fucking know. Like there are a lot of people who are like God is the way, like, and some people are super Amen. aggressive about it. But I've never had like anything super crazy. Like you, know, it's not like the police are fucking r- running on the fucking fumes of Jesus. Fucking yeah, like Florida's crazy, there, but but it doesn't have anything to do with uh god you know the most the most aggressive religious person i've ever encountered is uh some fucking assumedly homeless guy who uh asked uh for money when me i was walking a friend home from work and we were both like we don't have any cash on us dude i'm sorry and he was like i don't remember what he said he said some shit like if if you if you're sorry that means you sinned and then he told us to get a bible very aggressively Oh man, when I was homeless and not, I did not. When I was homeless in Austin, I had this homeless dude who was wearing like you know a Jesus T-shirt and stuff, and I was just chilling out watching my buddy Spange for fucking you know sing for cash, and um this fucking dude came up to me. He goes, "You boy, I can see your soul. You need Christ more than anyone here." And, like, he fucking singled me out, like, in front of, like, a whole group of fucking people. And, like, the thing, it wouldn't be such a big deal if it were just, like, the one time. But this happens, like, a lot. Like, someone can, quote, see my soul, and I need Jesus more than one, you know, more than one fucking time. Like, I lit loose uh, to a co old co-worker friend of mine. Uh... I let loose one time. I was like, no, I don't I don't know if I believe in God, dude. And it's like uh, I just sort of like laid it on him. Not like, you know, I didn't like hashtag red pill him or anything like that. I just said, I just don't know if I believe in God. And he had a bad negative reaction uh to it. And from like then on from there on out until like he got fired, I think not only for harassing me, because like it went on for like weeks and I when I finally said something. But apparently he's been fucked with other people too and being a general disturbance. But uh I've had that happen to me in, in public over at my job and and the last time it ever happened was I uh, was at this bar and I was hitting on this one chick and I was making fairly good progress. And this dude who heard me say that I, I didn't have any like faith or beliefs or anything, he comes up to me drunk, goes, Hey, what do you know? You're an atheist. And this chick just, I I then noticed the cross hanging, like, right, like, above her, like, you know, her buttons of her shirt, right? I just noticed Oh, you were looking too low on the chest. (laughs) Well, I was trying to be, like, I was trying to be, like, nice and not say, oh, right up above her tits. But, you know, it was up above her boobs. But, you know, I digress. Uh, She locked up for a second, goes, and, like, you don't believe in God? And I fucking stuttered and stammered, and like at, at that point, I knew I wasn't going to get any ass that you night. You should have said I didn't believe in God until I saw you, and I thought that I realized you oh, were no, blessing from see, above. See, that's just <laughs> bullshit, and I would never fucking say that. Like, you know, I, I could be, a, I could be a fucking greasy dude, but I don't think I can like lie to a chick uh, to get in a chick's pants for like that. That makes me feel bad. What it's the like, image I imagine is just like this hot chick wearing a cross. And like she, she's like, "You're an atheist. What a fucking loser!" Like, just <laughs> can't believe that you don't believe in God. Oh no, no, it would be fine if it were that because I've had that happen to me before for multiple other reasons besides atheism. But she got up and she fucking started sobbing uncontrollably. I'm like, <laughs> motherfucker, man, dude. She she started crying and then she says that I wow. she didn't want to talk to me anymore because. She, because uh, I didn't have what was best for my soul's interest at heart. You can see, you can so see like the Moe's Moe's getting man. laid tonight. O meter just creep up and up and up, and then suddenly 
right what back What do you know? Zero. You're an atheist. Yeah. <laughs> It's like fucking Fuka goddamn Shima, full on fucking ten o'clock, uh, ten bell fucking meltdown, man. It, it sucked. That that one hurt. That one hurt. Ugh. I guess. Uh, I guess. Uh, like what's what's crazy about religion down here in, in the southern states is, uh, you can still you can still see. A lot of the old school bullshit, but you see like a lot of the the decency coming back out now and coming back uh, uh, out these days. Like it used to be, it used to be bad, but now it's 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 not so bad. I guess that that would that's how I would sum up uh, religion in Texas, as opposed to these days. But anyway, so how do they do religion up or where you're at, Robin? Like, have you ever gotten like boxed in because of an uh, anti-abortion protest or something like that? That's what I mean. No, I mean I'm in a blue state. Um, yeah, I mean there's some pretty wacky religious people, but I think that goes for like anywhere in the United States. Like I, I've gotten people back when I worked at the gas station. You know, they'll they'll come in and they'll hold up the line and, you know, try to talk to you about, oh, well, you know, there's this place over here on this block or whatever, and, you know, we do some really cool stuff for the kids out there, and, you know, we got, like, a Christian rock group, and, you know, here's a here's a brochure, and it's like, okay, thank you, ma'am. Do you oh, need man. gas? <laughs> Christian rock sucks so hard. I, I tried to get into it. But, like, to me, like, rock music is sort of like, this is meant to be outlaw shit, you know? Like, it, it's sort of like a, what if, like, cops formed a rock band and they sung songs about obeying all the rules and doing what you're told? Like, that's that's kind of how, like... And, and like, they'll be talking to me and I'll, like, scratch my nose or whatever and I'll, like, purposefully lower my sleeve and show off, like, my trans bracelet and then I'll, you know, do the other hand and then my gay bracelet, you know, slides down and, you know, I'm just trying to really see, show off the like stop talking to me <laughs> see it really sucks you know you could do that back in the day and people will like go oh you're one of those oh my saws and they would fuck off now it's so fucking accepted you can't just like do that thing because then you're like having a dick measuring contest with people like oh you have that bracelet i have five of them like ah oh, son of a bitch i got called out <laughs> now i've got to commit to the bit Yeah, but any religious person is not going to be cool with that. Normally, not not the one that's going to hand you a fucking brochure uh, while you're on the clock. <laughs> I never understood the the being against tattoos and and, and rock music thing. Like I've I've had. Oh yeah, uh, I'll pull up my sleeve too and show my tattoo. Like I'll just try to just get people to like fuck off. Like me, I, I just like you know I don't I don't think God would care if you. Put a fucking tattoo like he's got like, you know, like his people have been. Well, I know what other. they say. <laughs> well, like you know, like people. Have well, God putting... created people in His image, and you're disagreeing with His image by changing your body. Yeah, but like, what if like you just didn't get the the thing that clicked on in this person's brain, and you didn't get tatted up, and it turns out fucking God has a fucking dead Kennedy's T-shirt on. And it's been, you know, like made a permanent CBGBs up in heaven. That's some some Christians have gotten a little more progressive about tattoos, but you you have to only have tattoos that are like religious in nature or like related to like family or some shit. It's, it's stupid ass shit. Well, yeah, yeah, like uh, they have to be like very simple and inoffensive. Like, uh, like a cross or an onk is okay. Sanskrit is still like weird, like that. It still weirds people out, and they don't like the Chinese or the uh, the uh, Asian lettering too much. I think it is Chinese letters that I'm talking about. No, what w- what's the more popular uh, Asian tattoo? The Chinese or Japanese letters? I feel like that, it depends. It can go either way. Uh, uh, you know, wh- whatever. There was a. There was a thought that I had, like it went fucking amscray, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, 
like little tattoos like that are okay, but like full sleeves with fucking, you know, kaiju out the ass, you like is still like frowned upon in polite Christian society, and it, all the other like religious uh, uh, societies too. Like a lot of people like try to say like, and, and this isn't disparaging like Judaism, but a lot of people they'll go to Israel, right? They'll go there with this uh, fuck Israel. Mm-hmm. They'll uh, go over there with like some really idealistic fucking like uh, uh, leanings and stuff, right? They'll, they'll show up with their piercings and their tattoos, and a lot of Israelis, especially in like even the smaller cities or b- even some of the bigger uh, sections of the bigger cities, they still shun you. They still shun you like they would in the old days. And like a lot of people, like they, they'll go to the Middle East or they'll go to the East and. Uh, like a, a lot of chicks I knew who are very, uh, let's say, who are very promiscuous, you know, ladies of the evening, as they were. They would go like to like, you know, like just Buddhist temples local around town. Right. And they'd get chased right the fuck out because they would try like fucking hitting on that cute little fucking Buddhist boy. Like, dude, you guys like they they, they still don't like degenerate behaviors, man, no matter how, uh, you know, you know, with the time some of these people are. And it's it's going to be a long, long time. Then, oh well, then again, I think it's only incremental. I hate to say it, but but you know, religious tolerance is kind of like the stock market. It only goes up to your preferred fucking strike point. You know, at your strike price or. I mean, how do they so build back, it back down. that demographic? I I don't think it's possible. Oh, the the religious bigot. No, I mean, how are they? How, no, no, no. Like, how could they? Let's let's say they get more progressive. How are they ever going to convince, like, a gay person to, like, you know, go to mass? Oh, uh, oh, well, like, never going to fucking know. happen. No, nah, I, I think that's it's you. You a can't lot build easier. that good faith back. Oh no, nah, I, I think, uh, I think, uh, the the United States specifically, the United States is one terrorist attack away or one really bad fucking scare away from everyone breaking down the churches, synagogues, and mosques to go back to them again. That's what I think. And and everyone's going to forget about their uh, their titles and all that stuff. And, you know, it doesn't take much to put the fear of God back into a population. Like, even stupid shit like uh, 2012 or Y2K, uh, that that stuff started getting some people to who used to never go to a uh, fucking church back to going to church, you know. So uh, and, uh, you know, and after nine eleven, church, uh, well, like a uh, uh, religious worship, uh, went up exponentially. Like a lot of people, you know, find the God or find their Lord after a, a tragedy, whether it be like, you know, you almost getting hit by a bus or nine eleven. I, I don't think it's as uh, it's it's as a uh, 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 dis. I I wouldn't be so dismissive. I guess uh, of that. I think that would be that's easier to happen. That'll be easy, uh, more easy to happen, or more prone to happen than you think. So that's that just my. Up? Oh, I I think, I think that's a lot. Uh, that could happen a lot easier than you think. Mm. Riley, are you back yet? Yes. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I just haven't had much to say for the past couple minutes. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess like my problem is I, I'm sort of doomer posting right now because I, I would like to think that, you know, people will like come so far along to where like religion will uh lose a lot of its real influence because that's that's all i've ever wanted was you know the re- religion out of the capitol buildings and like the 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 religious attitudes N- not that i give a shit about like other junk but um blah 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 why the fuck do i have a goddamn thing here? an update okay there we go uh i just i wanted that and i wanted god off of money because i thought that set a terrible precedent like, what do you worship more, God or money? Because, you know, for the religious, the Christians in the South have said, you know, America believes in God. Unfortunately, it's on this, and they'd hold up like a dollar bill. Oh, or and l- let me say this. 
you should not if if you are for profit you should not be tax exempt you don't think so you think uh the churches and, and religions being tax exempt is, uh, is a bad idea it's a horrible idea unless you're a non-profit church if you can show and, and even that... then you you have to probably go a little above and beyond well, I, 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 as long as they're like at least once a week trying to dole out soup for the poor or something, I mean, fucking anything. No, like if you're for profit, out... you should you should be paying your fucking taxes. Well, see, th there. I think if we did that, I think there would be a, hu a bigger spike in uh, ne the need for uh, welfare and uh, uh, food stamps and unemployment and stuff like that. Sometimes. Uh, you know, a church like a, doing a fun fundraising drive or something that can uh, very sparingly because mostly it's hey, I need unemployment or worth or welfare or food stamps because life's just fucking hard, right? But for some people, that that is the line between having to go into the system and not. Because yeah, but the they do all that stuff. Social... They they can do all that stuff while being a nonprofit, and they do. It's it's not like when they're doing those like soup drives and shit. They're they're like you know, paying to make soup. They're, like, getting donations to do that. Uh, well, and and yeah. earning a profit on their church well, while I being tax-exempt. Well, I think being a preacher it should be considered a job, though, because the church is... The religion does serve a, a decent purpose because, unfortunately, uh people have to be bribed in order to be good like every religion pretty much has uh hey if you're good here you get all the big material things that we tell you are bad here on earth but magically aren't so bad up in this fucking uh this pie in the sky fucking like paradise that we got and but the rub is well, i don't have inherently have first. a problem with a for-profit <laughs> church i i do have a problem with a for-profit church getting tax exemptions I think if your if your church is on TV, you should be taxed. I like that. That's that's where I would definitely. Uh, that's where I would draw a line. Was like, hey, are you fucking? If you are you Kenneth Copeland? Are you are you what's his name? Fucking uh, the dude who locked the fucking doors to the mega church, John Joel Olstein. Yeah, if you're fucking Joel Olstein, and I see your shit on fuck more than like public access TV. Your ass should get fucking taxed like fucking crazy, because at some point in time, when does a church cease to be a church and more of a corporation, and vice versa? You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, oh man, Olstein. And man, there's there's irreparable shit. damage that's been done to the education system because of religion in the United States. So, you oh, know that's yeah, cool. yeah. Fucking uh, Texas was uh, it used to be hit really really hard. Uh, by the religious, uh, like uh, what would happen was we would just have don't have people... sex. <laughs> no, I'm not just gonna not have sex. <laughs> That's what everyone says. But no, chastity is the only way to that... truly avoid STDs and unwanted pregnancy. I mean, you know what's fucking crazy is like I I went through the 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 promise the ring the promise ring people thingy. And <laughs> Jonas I, I Brothers, the... I've heard of them. Yeah, I, I had the pro fucking promise ring, and then, like, about, like, two days later, I fucking beat my meat to some fucking porn. I was like, well, this fucking, this this ring is fucking pointless. I mean, I still have these urges. Like, they're not going to stop, but I still want to bang like this. like, pinching your frenulum. It was like, yeah, I, I got to get the fuck out of here. I got I to gotta ditch this fucking ring. This is making me look stupid. Uh, anyway, I, I think I've said all I can possibly say in this hot fucking room about religion. This is a lot less heated than I thought. Like, I used to not be able to talk about this topic without getting super, super heated. And uh, it was because, like, my mother is, like, a fundamentalist Christian. And my, my like grandmother's... Huh? Oh, I just cut out for a sec. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and my grandmother is, like, a, a, a freaking, like, hardline uh rudy giuliani republican jew <laughs> uh very like a very new york jew uh that's the way that she put it so like to listen to to live in that in that house and then uh 
uh, listening to them argue about what books of the Bible are relevant and not relevant. My uh, my grandmother has this little like when she gets mad at my mother, she'll like throw this. Well, I guess you people don't really use this part of the Bible. Uh, oh well, and she'll fucking walk away. And my fucking mom has like a uh, your your typical California Irish fucking uh, crazy California. Have you guys temper. ever been to New York? I've never been to New York, but I think, I. I, I think my grandma. One time, I um, my my family we took a trip up to the uh, the Bronx Zoo, um, because it's like relatively close and it's something fun to do, you know, whatever. And for some reason, it was fucking Jewish Day there. Like, a ton of Jewish people were like, at the zoo. Hashtag and, Jew uh, Zoo. And like that's fine and whatever, but then like they I'm they I'm gonna like expand upon that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm just moving, moving on. Moving on, moving on. <laughs> so I guess like whatever branch of Judaism they follow in New York, I, I'm not a, I don't I don't know that much about Judaism like uh, branches or you know whatever, well, like, like different seems... um, ideologies inside of Judaism. But whatever the type they are in New York, they they have to like stop and pray at a certain time of day. Oh yeah, and so, yeah. I, I think those are Hasidic Jews. Do they have Hasidic? The yeah, that's like, it. Yeah, it's the Hasidic. Black hats yeah. and fucking curly cues and all that stuff. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Yeah, th those are Hasidics. It's so we're like, at the zoo, and and everybody, all foot traffic has been halted because everyone's down on their fucking knees. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's down on their fucking knees. You can't walk because there's just everyone's in the way, just praying. <laughs> it's just what the fuck is going on? Oh man, uh, so uh, there was just like, it's it, all right. So sometimes religion down here can be like pretty nice, but sometimes you get the feeling that nothing's really changed. You know, the more more things change, the more they say the same. I saw this coworker of mine have like the ugliest look on her face. And I was like, it, it, I said, uh, I was asking her, hey, what's wrong? And she goes, whatever you do, don't go into that room. And I'm like, well, my lunch bag's in there. I got to go in the room and grab it. So I'm like, I'm about to like freak out on some shit. No, it turns out it was some Muslim dude right around, I think it was five o'clock. And he was pointing his fucking mat, what he uh, thought was, I think it's like East. And he was praying to Mecca. I think it was like praying time uh, for them. And she was like freaking the fuck out, like you know we're about to get fucking nine eleven here. I'm like, dude, it's the, the no one's fucking doing anything. Calm down. Like, there's so many Arab people here in this area. Like, you know, like, do you even care anymore? Everyone's always been nice. She really you know? thought you were about to get Allahu Akbar just because this guy was praying. Oh no, she uh, cause like she was like fifty or something uh, when I was like thirty, thirty one. So this is like, and this was like a decade ago, you know. So like, it, it's 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 been a while, but uh, sometimes, like you you see hope, but sometimes all it takes is one or two bad times to go right back at that point in point in negativity. <sighs> Riley, do you have any closing thoughts on religion, or do you have anything that you would like to talk about before we close everything up? Religion generally pretty cringe but you know what the, some of the stories we told today sort of brought home the fact that like religion at its best is a community of people that's sort of united in believing in a thing and i think that particular aspect is very valuable but yeah you know just like, don't shove it in other people's faces oh <laughs> well, yeah that's, that's I mean, what that, i gotta that's... say that that's going to take some doing, and that's going to take a lot more time. But for the most part, I I do like the air of volunteerism that has uh, risen among religious people. Like uh, it used to be, like every once in a while, or has fallen. I'm sorry, what? Oh, I was gonna say, or has fallen from or religious has fallen. people. <laughs> I, I was about to, uh, you know, uh, every once in a while, I'll see right around Christmas time. Uh, stories of uh muslims protecting their uh uh christian brothers and sisters families and friends uh from uh protecting them during their uh i, I think christmas eve mass or whatever 
because back in the day in the Middle East, you know, uh, uh, Islamic extremists, and I'm not being like bigoted or anything. It's just a matter of fact. Anyone who's listening, uh, Islamic extremists used to just bomb the shit out of fucking churches. And uh, they did that for a couple of years, and then those same Christians in that area uh, started surrounding the, 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 the mosques and uh, even the synagogues during their holy days to stop them because like uh, the, the Islamic extremists looked at the uh, Muslims who were protecting the Christians and Jews during their ho uh, holy days as traitors to the proverbial cause. So they'd attack them too. And it used to be real bloody for a while, but then stuff like be it became so prevalent where like you can tell that you know that the group's going to show up during this or this holiday and now the likelihood of them being fucked with has been gone down exponentially like i hear those stories all the time now during like a uh, a uh, religious holidays like ramadan and easter and christmas and stuff now and that's that that's good that's really uh, enlightening and and not disheartening like it usually is, but that that's fucking good that that's happening. Uh, all right, uh, Robin, do you have any uh, final thoughts? Uh, anything you want to talk about before we wrap up? Hmm. Yeah, I think the coolest part in my childhood was just the like community of it. Not necessarily like the getting together for a common belief or anything. Just like Having an have an excuse to like get out of the house and like see people regularly is is a cool thing, I guess. Yeah, you definitely knew that in a small town, you going to a church, depending on which church it was, you were probably going to see the majority of your friends there. And sometimes, if you're one of the smarter kids, you'll start going, "Mommy, I don't like this church. Can we go to this one?" And then you find out that half their friends go to that one, and nobody gives a shit. <laughs> like you just want to be near your friends. I, I pulled that trick a few times. Yeah, as as annoying as it can be sometimes, you know. Like as a kid especially when like you don't have the choice of whether or not you want to go to church or not. Yeah. Yeah. And like uh threatened with my with ass whoopings if I can get my shit my Sunday shit on and go to fucking church. Yep, like, Sunday oh, best. Please touch my no no square. Can we go to another church? Loretta Baptist Central South by the Sea Bay Church. Uh here for about fifteen years. I hell we're gonna fucking change. <laughs> Gee, isn't it fucking sad that that used to be like the predominant fucking attitude of like when people used to get like touched in their no no area by their priests, people were like Oh, that's just how it is. I got touched in my no no area by that other one by that one priest when I was his age his age, and they sort of grew up with like sexual assault being like completely normalized in, in that in that little like community. And that's like something Mo, that once I, again I ask, what kind of fucking church were you going to? Oh, well, this is a common problem. Getting beaten up in the parking lot and sexual assault is no, totally okay. No, 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 no. I didn't get ass raped or anything. Other people fucking <laughs> did. Like, no, 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 no. Like, if if I ever got touched, you know, if my dad found out about it. Like, dude, this is back in the fucking 80s when, you know, a man can get, like, about eight or nine other men around. And, like, I heard you touch my son. And you're going to find his body in a fucking river floating up in about two years' time. Like, people get fucking disappeared for that shit back in the day. But, like, in in those, like, desert fucking, like, uh, 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 southern towns or even, like, s states like, say, like, New uh, New Mexico or Arizona or something, like, uh, like there, there was an actual, like, rape culture in, in, in those things. Because, like, you know, you just you just shut up and you don't talk about it. Like, I've never been to a church where I've ever experienced that, or as far as I know, no one else has ever experienced that. Don't say it. Don't think it. Don't I... say it. Don't think it. <laughs> it was like, but, uh, but definitely there has been rumblings from, like, other towns, like, you know, 30 miles away. Hey, you know, every once in a while, everyone will be fucking around, and then someone says, hey, uh, uh, Brother Maxwell, because uh, we were Baptists, so we called everyone by brother or sister which was weird and culty. 
But uh, cause I I did grow up Southern Baptist, but every once in a while, you know, like Brother Maxwell got busted, you know, diddling some fifteen year old, and you know that would happen sometimes, and people would just like hush you up and shut you be quiet, tell you to be quiet, and you know, just get on with your life, because that's the way the church is, because there's nothing really, uh, technically forbidding that, and that's how it was, and I'm glad that that's, it's slipping away, but. It's also becoming more secretive, and you're. And sometimes I, I think there's a harder, there's a, a harder, uh, uh, there's there. It's much a, it's a much harder job to root it out than it used to be, because like for a while you were able to go just by you know decades by tons of parishioners and all that who used to go to the churches and junk like that, and you can root out the bad priests. Now it's, you know, they've gotten more crafty. And, like, the Catholic Church is, like, fucking terrible about this. Like, if a priest gets busted, they won't fire them. They'll recall them, make them disappear for a little bit, and fucking uh, rotate them out to some other fucking place. Like, you know, somewhere in Hawaii or uh, Africa or somewhere else in the world where no one will know what they fucking did ever. But, yeah. And with yeah. that... And with that thought, uh, you know, Brother Mo, Sister Robin, I think we've done a good podcast today. Yeah, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it, even though I Amen. stuttered a lot. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Riley, where can they find you at, man? Oh, you can find me on Twitter at Riley Tweets. You can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Riley Streams. Find me on YouTube as Riley Exclamation Point. Or on the YouTube channel Big Guy Little Guy where I do let's plays with my buddy Andrew finally back after nice. 9 months of dormancy it's finally returned we're putting out 3 let's plays a week and we're already we've already pre-recorded up to like the first 2 and a third weeks so we know it's going to be on the right path for at least a little while um want to let want to let us in on what the let's one of the let, at least one of the let's plays will be well, uh, currently our only like series is the our Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure. The other episodes we recorded that aren't that are a bunch of one offs where uh, me and Andrew sat down with our friend Demi Gloom and just looked up what the worst Game Boy Color games were and played oh, some man. of those. <laughs> uh, Demi Gloom's a good kid. Uh, yeah, Demi's a good friend of ours. He's good people. That Demi, um, mm. but. In the on the podcast front, there's Pixels, Polygons, and Fun, which is located wherever podcasts are found. There's uh, uh, Pokemon Variety Hour, which is on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts. Those same three places are where you can find the Riley Podcast Mega Feed, which is where shows that I am a part of come out, such as Large Dish in the Galaxy, which also comes out of Big Guy, Little Guy. That's me and Andrew's podcast. And more recently, the Jelly U Podcast, which actually is a podcast Ho main hosted by my buddy Jason. I am the co-host, but he wanted it to be on, you know, audio places. So he asked me to put it on the mega feed. So it's there. You can listen to the Jelly U podcast. Our most recent episode is going to go up probably far before this, considering it's going up tomorrow morning. <laughs> um, no, nice, nice. Our newest episode is uh, about uh, school stories. We told stories about our time in school, and we actually met in school. So it was interesting. We got to tell a couple stories that like the others could relate to because we went to that same school for a time. So that was that was a good episode. And uh, is there anything I'm missing that's important? No, I think I'm good. <laughs> uh, Robin, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Inside Alloy, and you can find me on Twitch, twitchtv Alloy. I started playing uh, Abzu, which is uh, free right now on PlayStation. It's a... I don't know what the fuck it is. It's like an underwater space exploration simulator game. I, I don't know. It's weird, but kind of cool. If you want to know more, head over to twitch.tv slash Inside Alloy. This will tell you all yeah, about yeah. it. You get to, like, scuba dive with whales and shit. That's kind of cool. Kind of like Subnautica or something? 
Yeah, it's not like it's not a survival game. It's just like a I don't even know. I think it's an ex like an experience, you know. Cool, cool. Is it like is it like exploratory? Is there like shit to find, like nooks and crannies and shit? No, it seems to be pretty linear so far. Okay. So like you you get progressively like more interesting aquatic life as you descend. So there's some narrative happening and I don't know what it is. Interesting. What about you, most of Digatron the third? You can find me at twitch.tv slash mo diggity uh mo mo diggity forty two on Instagram and what are my YouTube channels? Uh, that's youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Mo Diggity 42. You can check that is out where this Mo's podcast goes, right? I am correct about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's okay. it's that and anchor.fm. Uh, you know, you can check that place Got out. It. All your favorite little your favorite little podcast uh, uh, apps are all on anchor.fm. And lots of people listen to our shit, you know, going through there lately. I'm checking the numbers. It's pretty nice. So thank you to the folks at anchor.fm for hosting our shit. And I made a Mo Side Gaming TikTok channel where uh, I've been doing pretty well over there, having some fucking traction over there. I, play, I do little, uh, 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 it's almost entirely video game related, uh, with the exception of like you know some Firefly and TV stuff that I've been branching out into lately. But yeah, that's uh, that's me. And I thank y'all for coming out. I do appreciate it. And until next time. Later, and goodbye. Ta-ta. Bye. Bye. We're no strangers to love. No the rules, and so do I. Full commitments, what I think you do. Wouldn't hear this from any other guy. And I just want to take. I've watched a bunch of series that I've been meaning to catch up for like the last year, year and a half. Like, uh, I watched all the Walking Deads and shit, and I watched uh, Gotham and all that stuff. The ending of Gotham sucked, I thought. Those Fear the Walking Dead tweets were so good, though. Oh, oh, okay, you actually like them? Good, good. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that as sort of like content now, because uh, I, I, I like doing that, but I won't do that for tweet? like... Well, no, like I'll just pause there. Well, because I got some views on on some of the Walking Dead ones, got some good views on there. Um, like I I just stopped and said, okay, now this is just fucking ridiculous. Like there's fucking one, and this pisses me off to no end. There's a a giant fucking gang of fucking zombies. Like at least Riley, I shit you not, fifty or sixty of them, right? Fuck. And there's fifty or sixty of them. They go down to a river. They're like, oh no, a river. That'll help us wash them out. Yay! And so the next like couple of minutes, you watch just a bunch of set pieces of like stunt, you know, stunt double zombies, uh, getting washed away in a fucking like a, a glorified water fucking park ride. And it's they do it to like five or six of them. It then cuts out. It cuts back to the fucking characters. All right, that's the last of them. Let's go. I'm like motherfuckers. What happened to the other fifty fucking zombies that were over there? There's another one where they're they're uh, uh they got fucking a bunch of heavy ass fucking cars uh piled in the middle of there, right? Like the ladder of zombies, like grew oh god, the fucking ladder is the most pissed me <laughs> off so goddamn much. Uh they they uh uh groups of zombies cannot or oh, they cannot immediately bust down a door in that show, but five of them fucking like rushing up against a, a fucking car will move it immediately like i hate the strength and like uh thickness inconsistencies of the fucking zombies and and that and there's been like a 10 year fucking like uh, a time jump from season one to the season that we have now right 
I gotta fucking and say. And the zombies do get weaker as the time goes on. I keep fucking thinking that they're going to incorporate that, but they still really have They do in the main show. Like, you start get like, they start getting, like, really fucked up looking, and, like, you get ones that are, like, like, really squishy and, like, moist because they've just had so much exposure to sunlight and shit. I mean, I gotta say, after, like, a few freaking southern freaking summers, like, some of the... Because the threat in the main show has not been walkers for a long time, I don't think. I, I haven't watched the show in a long time. Yeah, walkers are pretty much just a... They're, they're just a sort of, like, window dressing. And there has been really everything else, like, with the... I'm, I'm a you get a horde every once in a while. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit disappointed in the uh, the Whisperer War. Like, I there was some really gr- there was some really great fucking uh, episodes from the Whisperer War, but overall, I was like, eh. You just read the kinda, comics. I think they kind of botched it in the comics too. I think I think they the ending really was real great. bad. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I didn't wait. I didn't like the way that Alpha fucking died and all that stuff and. Like, I can understand the occasional emotional breakdown over her daughter. I but... did not read that that uh, issue of the comics thinking that Rick was going to die that comic. Like, I could not believe, my like, what was going on. Oh, man, when, uh, what's her name? There was died. no indication that the comics were ending. And, and, like, it just happened, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I really didn't, uh, I, I don't appreciate that. That's, like, why I'm... I have such hard times. I'm having such a hard time trying to uh, get into shit nowadays because, like, sometimes stuff can just abruptly fucking end. Like, uh, I don't think that we're ever going to get the last two books of Game of Thrones. Uh, So we pretty much have to live with the fact that the ending of the show is going to be pretty much considered the end of the fucking series. Like, this is how it's going to fucking be. And everything's so much better in the fucking books. I mean, you know, he doesn't, like, George R. R. Martin doesn't owe anyone anything, right? But there's got to be, there's there's nothing wrong with, like, you know, your fan base going, hey, man, it's uh, been seven fucking years, you know? You think we can, like... Yeah, I think you'd be done by right now, now if you even wrote, like, a single word per day for the past seven years. Yeah, I mean, for fuck's sake, uh, uh, the guy who made... Uh, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. He fucking knew. He, you know him, uh, Terry Pratchett. Uh, uh, th- these people, they, they, they knew, like how they, they need to get their asses in gear. Like Douglas Adams. There we go. He's the guy that made the Hitchhiker's Guide. Like he, he's got to like come on already. I mean, at the very least, just making an extra big book, and just like split it up in two. I, w- I would just fucking accept that. And, like, we've been getting sample chapters for years now. Like, uh, there, there's, like, a, I think probably a good half the book is already out in, like, sporadic order uh, on the internet. Like, uh, Preston Jacobs, uh, he, he's been covering GOT since, like, 2013, 2014, something like that. I think right around there. And uh, his shit is extensive, and every time there's a... Uh, a sample chapter for like Tyrion or someone else, um, you know, it, it comes out. It's all you know, like we we read it, we check it out. It's fucking great. But at at the end of the day, you know, the shit should be done already. At least one book, man. Hell, I, I mean, I, I I just I just think that we we deserve an end to that series, but I don't think we're gonna really get it because the show is already out. And he could just like just fucking say I retire and I'm not going to write the books anymore, which he's going to fucking die. Yeah, he he's been looking like he's about to fucking die, like for years now. Like I I don't even want him to release another book because he's going to release the next one and then croak and then it's like okay cool like why? Epic cliffhanger for the finale of Game of Thrones. <laughs> The answer well, yeah, I mean, John's been it. dead for, like, ten years now, so. Oh, yeah, well, like, uh, he hasn't been, like, he hasn't been resurrected in the books yet, has he? No, not at all. No, in yeah. fact, the last page of the book is describing his death. Yeah. 
yeah, holy shit. We really are, they really are that far behind in the fucking books, huh? Yeah. God, that was such a great fucking episode, too. Game of Thrones used to be so fucking great. Ugh. I have never watched a, a single episode of Game of Thrones. All right, so... You're like, better off. Well, I, I think you should watch, like, seasons one through four, and then, like, give me some time, and I will tell you what episodes to watch for the rest of the fucking series, because there's just a bunch of bullshit, and, like, you don't really need to, like, waste your time watching, like, a lot of... Yeah, the, one through four is good, and then, like, parts of five, and then some parts of six, and then just forget about everything else. Oh, like, uh, yeah, the, the last season was such a fucking disappointment. Like, remember when we were told that we were going to get episodes as long as movies? Well, that never fucking happened, and it, it, I didn't, I didn't like the way that the uh, the the uh, the others, or excuse me, the White Walkers. <sighs> uh, I I didn't like the way uh, the way that that ended. Like, we got like this huge fucking decade long build up for like one big episode. Like, ah, come on, man. Like, a. Uh, this should have gotten like the the next to last episodes should have been them surviving and being able to go to. King well, they King all King knew King. that winter was coming, and they all knew that it was time for the long dark. And the, and where does Tyrion, the smartest character that we've ever been introduced, bring all of the people to like the the innocent like, you know, unable to defend themselves people, in order to be safe? They, he brings them to a crypt. Yeah, I always thought that was really fucking funny. Like, all these Lannisters are going to come back from the fucking dead any minute now. In fact, two two of the smartest characters in the whole show, Varys and Tyrion, were in the crypt and directed people to go to the crypt. Oh, man. I hated the the fact that they had to put uh, Varys down. I was uh, I was really really big fan of his character. I really loved the shit out of Varys. I thought he was one of my, he was one of my favorites. 